Hiya. So in this video, we're going to look at the Poisson point process. Uh, so for now, we're first going to look at things in a slightly different angle. Um, and what we're going to do is remember how when we had the binomial distribution, the continuous version of that was the normal or Poisson distributions, depending on your ratio and things. Um, you can either do the normal or Poisson distribution as an approximation, right? Um, so as I was kind of mentioning the in the last uh, video or two videos ago, no, yeah, last video, um, the exponential distribution can be seen as um, a continuous version of the geometric distribution, right? So the geometric distribution is you had some static number of things and you look for the first time something happens. Um, and exponential is the same thing. You have some static number of things, um, but in a continuous way, and you'll wait for the first time something kind of happens. Um, and you get a very similar distribution. Uh, the, the, and they both start from zero, they go on to infinity, so they're very closely related to one another. Uh, for a geometric distribution, we actually saw that uh, the probability um, was given by one over p. So if x is a geometric uh, variable, uh, then the expected value um, is one over p, where p is the probability of any individual thing happening. Um, if our probability is small enough, um, then this kind of becomes very large, right? Uh, and it turns out that if we just scale this thing, so we do x divided by 1 um, by the expected value, what we get is x divided by 1 over p. In other words, we just get p times x. Um, and so we're just trying to scale this. Um, and you'll see where we're going in a second with this, but for now it's probably a little confusing. Um, so we're just rescaling it by the expected value. Um, then if we look at this formula, so if we recall um, in the geometric case, we had this kind of formula for when we want greater than n things. Um, and if we then compare this kind of thing, so if I look at px greater than t, well, what is this giving me? Uh, this is just the probability that x is greater than t over p. So I can just look at this formula now. So I get t over p. Now this, one thing to kind of note is that we there's a nice little formula where 1 minus p is roughly equal to minus p. Uh, so in other words, we can actually make this roughly equal to e to the minus p times t over p. So the p's cancel and we get e to the minus t. Now here, this should look a lot more similar to our uh, exponential formula. So you can kind of very, you can kind of see that with this rescaling, the exponential formula is basically giving us, um, or the geometric um, distribution and exponential distribution are very closely related. Um, and if you kind of want to see this thing, if you're like, yo, I don't actually believe this, this is actually true, uh, try for a small p. So if p is equal to 0, uh, 1 minus p, 1 minus 0 is equal to 0 e to the uh, minus 0, so it's equal to 1, right? Both sides are equal to 1. Um, so not too bad. Um, and then technically, if we take, um, yeah, um, Yeah, so that should be good. Um, so there, there's actually a way. So notice how we actually have, there's actually a way to look at the exponential distribution through the lens of the Poisson distribution. And that's kind of where we're going to go on from here. Um, and this is kind of how we had two different ways to look at the binomial distribution. So let's kind of backtrack a little. Um, and let's go back to the binomial distribution. So if we had the binomial distribution, remember that when we had k successes out of n trials, uh, so k successes out of n trials, uh, we had this formula for this, n choose k times p to the k, 1 minus p to the n minus k. Um, but there's actually another way to think about this um, using a geometric approach. Um, and we can think about this as when the certain uh, successes occur. So this is kind of better done through an example. So let's look at a quick example um, here. 
Um, and the example is basically saying, okay, uh, say that I have 10 trials. So I'm looking at 10 different trials um, and I have two different successes. And let's look at an example. So here I can have my one individual run of this. Um, and here I have one success. So success, failure, I guess I'll do this in red for failure, 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 failure. Then the seventh one is a success. Wait, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, seventh one is a success. Eighth is failure, ninth is failure, and tenth is failure. So here is two successes in uh, 10 trials. Now there's actually a second way we can look at this, right? So the, the way this is working is this is where the 10 choose two is coming from. I can choose any of these 10 to be two, um, the successes. Um, here I've just chosen one of these options. Uh, and then the P to the N or P to the two and one minus P to the two give me the different things. Now the second way to kind of do this is kind of look at when we, for example, when we had the um, card thing, when we were looking at how um, the, the distribution for finding the first ace in a deck of cards kind of thing. Um, well, I guess that's not a good way. Um, in a geometric distribution, we're just looking, okay, the number of dice rolls, we can just look at when the first time we find a certain thing to happen. So here we can kind of look at this and say, okay, how, when does this first thing happen? So it actually just takes zero things. So there's nothing here. Um, and then we have a success and then we have five failures and then we have another success and then we have three failures at the very end. So in other words, another way to look at this is just when our successes happen um, or like how, what are, what's in between our successes. Since we're looking for two successes, what we really want is three numbers. So here we have three numbers, zero, five, and three. Um, and we just need to make sure these three numbers are equal to, well, the number of uh, failures. So we just need zero plus five plus three to be equal to eight. So in other words, this geometric distribution, we're going to be summing over in essence, well, we still have um, two successes, so P squared, um, and we still have N minus K uh, failures, but now we're gonna be looking at this distribution in a little different way. So we have to sum over all the different numbers that sum up to eight where we have three numbers. Obviously, this is still going to be 10 choose 2 because um, we should get the same formula, but it's a different approach to this. And these two approaches are basically what's called the Poisson point process. Uh, we kind of look at two different ways um, of looking at this kind of idea. Um, note that the book calls this the Poisson arrival process. Uh, that's old terminology. It's not really used anymore. So just note it's not Poisson point process. Um, and so basically what this looks at, so puts on point process is the first way is basically saying, well, um, where do these things happen? Like what exact locations in my whole chain does this happen? So it looks at which points this happens at. So that's the first way. And this is basically done through the binomial distribution. The second way is basically saying, okay, let me start from the beginning and find which time, at which time intervals something happens. Um, and this is more the geometric approach. Um, and so this is the second way is the geometric distribution, which asks how long do I have to wait? Um, and so these two are basically the two main different ways of doing things. Points and arrivals basically say, okay, um, I look at some interval of time I say we want n different successes, so n i different successes. Um, these are called usually called the number of arrivals, so how many arrivals we have. Um, and in a continuous world, this gives us a Poisson distribution with parameter lambda t because we're assuming Poisson because um, our pub our probability is super 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 low. Uh, so don't don't worry about oh why not normal. Just know that we're always using Poisson for this. Um, and here the parameter we're using is lambda t for the Poisson distribution. Um, in this case, lambda is just the number of successes we expect to see per unit of time. 
Remember time, we don't really know what the interval is, so you have to be given what the unit is. Um, the second way is the geometric way, right? And in this case, we're looking from the beginning to the end and trying to see how often something occurs. So in this case, we start at the beginning and we count the number of successes we get as our time increases. And in this case, we're getting the exponential. So I should highlight these actually. So here we have Poisson distribution. In this case, we have the exponential distribution with expected value one over lambda. So basically, we, um, yeah, so we just look at the different distrib the number of successes based off each one being an exponential distribution. Um, so this might be a little confusing. So I think we're going to look at this in a much more deep way in the next example. So I'm going to wait to go over this in a much more nice way in the next example. Um, so we can see the differences between the two and why they're the same, why they're different, um, etc. Uh, so I will see you uh, for the next example in the next video. So I'll see you there.